Breaking the News with Des Clark. Hi, I'm Des Clark and this is the best of unbroadcast Breaking the Euros. A chance for you to hear bits from our Euro 2024 special that we couldn't quite fit in the first time around. We've got stories, outtakes, jokes and more support for Scotland than you can shake a bratwurst at. Here's what's coming up. We weren't even in the same country. <laughs> Everyone deserves second chances. It's a yellow card, surely it's got to be. A fan zone, but we like curling fans. Commonly used term in Scotland, that. I'm really excited about it and I'm so glad you are all behind me. <laughs> Another glorious failure to remind us of. He's not even noticed I've got 13 players in the park. Go out there and conquer Germany. <laughs> So to celebrate Scotland at the Euros, we brought together Breaking the News, Off the Ball and Sacked in the Morning. Our two teams were Tam Cowan, Jay Lafferty and Stuart Cosgrove. And up against them were Amy Irons, Ray Bradshaw and Athena Cook-Blenu. We started off the show by looking at Scotland's chances along with our competitors. And if you want odds in something, as Tam Cowan suggests, just head to the bookies. We're 150 to 1, right? Uh, that's a worrying bit because, as they always say, the old cliche, the bookies never get it wrong. Uh, I was in Ladbrokes yesterday and the lassie behind the counter says, oh, Kevin, you could be losing four stone. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> can I just say one other thing, and, and this is quite important here, is that we sometimes like having a, a, a relationship with England where we exaggerate mm. how good they are and how they're going to go all the way yeah. and how it's the greatest young team you've ever seen in your life and all the rest of it. And we never give them the due respect they have for throwing white plastic chairs about in the fan zone. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably the world's best at that. Yeah. not spoken about enough, you're right. No. You, you make that an Olympic sport. And it's mere glory for England. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I think at this point it would be right to turn to Athena. <laughs> As <laughs> the, like a diplomat. Yes, yes. representing all of England right now yeah. at this point. So you can deal with it in whatever order you want, talking about Scotland and England's chances in the Euros. All right, well, I will show off my knowledge of the Scottish Premier League right now because uh, I'm aware that it's a league of uh, two teams... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so here's the, this is the thing that's always let Scotland down in the past, right? Not enough depth. Like, I've always described the SPL as like a gender reveal party. Do you know? What, like, no, because people are doing this thing now where they get their ultrasounds and they put the result of the ultrasound in an envelope and it has the gender in the envelope. And then you open the envelope in front of your friends and family and you're like, oh, it's a girl or it's a boy. And I think, well, that's really boring. It's going to be one or the other, <laughs> right? A bit like the SPL, right? <laughs> so that's, but now you've kind of got players kind of playing all over the shop you know and you've got a better league I think you know I think your highest scorer comes from hearts yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know this is kind of like a new thing it's probably why why you qualified like so confidently you didn't scrape in like Wales <laughs> to, 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 to like the World Cup so I kind of think Scotland will do okay I love Athena telling us to be optimistic about the Scottish League and all that kind of stuff and it's not been called the SPL for a decade <laughs> so that was uh, <laughs> um <laughs> Up next, Jay Lafferty tries to sum up Scotland's place in the competition before Athena Cook-Blenu, Amy Irons and Ray Bradshaw attempt to inspire the Scotland squad. So I'm not a football fan, right? But I am really excited about the Euros. Like, I bought the sticker album. I've got, like, you know, I'm getting Aww. really, really into it because I feel like us being at the Euros is, you know, the wee guy that turns up to every party that nobody's seen him before, but... He just let him in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because he seems like good crack. He's brought some cans with him. He's got a bottle of whiskey. He knows a song. He, he can't sing it very well, but he does it with a lot of passion. And I feel like that's us. Aye. I'm really excited about We're it. We're part of it. And you've got the sticker book as well. I'm really excited about it. And I'm so glad you are all behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I'm not so sure, though, about bringing good crack to a party. I mean, there's kids walking around. <laughs> right. Athena, go on then. You're sending that Scotland team out there as the manager. What would you be telling the guys? I would look at each man in the eye and I would say, you know what? You're going to give this country the greatest victory over an English team since Susan Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> Beat diversity in Britain's Got Talent. And they'll win the, win the Euros. Like, that's, 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 an, that's, that's an amazing formula. speech, yeah. apart from the fact diversity actually beats Susan Boyle. <laughs> What in my memory she, she won should that. have won. You're right. You're absolutely How did she right. not? Won? She won the hearts of the nation. She wow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saving that. <laughs> <rate>. <laughs>
<laughs> Another glorious failure to remind us of. Typical English overlord. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, what do you think then? If you could be there, if you could be the manager, what would you be saying to the guys? I think I would just be like, listen, guys, see last time, it was the warm-up Euros. <laughs> All those excuses of, oh, we've never done this before, I don't really know how it works. The excuses have to stop now. Go out there and conquer Germany. That's all I would say. Wow, there you go. Great phrasing of go out there and conquer Germany. <laughs> we, we continue this World War II retrospective. <laughs> Ray Bradshaw, go on, mate. I know you've fantasised about managing Scotland. Put yourself in that picture. What are you saying to the guys? Well, so when Wales qualified for World Cup, they got Michael Sheen in to do the speech. And if you've seen the video, it's very rousing. I think we go the other way, but we get weird Scottish celebrities to come do stuff like... Get Subo singing outside the team hotel the night before, walking in the tunnel. <laughs> Imagine the Germans' faces when the team mascot is Jimmy Cranky walking out. <laughs> Athena, talk us through how you would feel. What would the celebrations be like if and when Scotland win the Euros? You've got to ram it down our throats, man. Yeah. You've got to really ram it. Instead of it's coming home, you can call the song, it's, it's, it's got a new home now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, come, it's gone somewhere else. Yeah. It's left you for good. Gee, what about it then? Who do you think was the biggest threat to Scotland and can we get out of the group stages? I think our biggest threat is probably ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like that self-sabotage, it's in our nature. I'm worried that we might get through to the latter stages and I reckon the Scottish team might react a little bit like the person that's left at the end of tipping point, who's like, we coin is nowhere near the edge. And they're like, we've had a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going home with nothing. I think we'll just leave it there. Each week, our writers come up with amazing jokes for the show, but we've only got half an hour and not all of them make the cut. But having this bonus show means we can feature some gags that we couldn't fit in last time. So here's a previously unheard joke, as well as a classic bit of material from Tam. Listen very carefully. He will only tell it once. Germany are one of the favourites to win the Euros, but Switzerland also have a good chance of getting their hands on the trophy, because if the Germans win it, they'll ask the Swiss to hide it for them. <laughs> Can I just apologise to anybody that's triggered by the amount of World War II references? <laughs> this has is, is turned into an episode of a low, a low. <laughs> well, uh, But you're like my grandfather. I guess I'll get around the applause indeed. My grandfather, uh, during the war, himself brought down four German planes. Yeah, well, there we go. He, he was the worst mechanic, the worst laugher <laughs> that for the final word on Scotland's opponents, here's an unaired joke that is definitely offside. Scotland have been warned not to be starstruck by the German players after John McGinn told Thomas Muller he was a big fan of his yoghurts. <laughs> Want to see him take a corner? The... <laughs> it's a yellow card, surely it's got to be... Now, Tam and Stuart are legends of sports broadcasting here in Scotland and have many stories of tournaments gone by, including this one about when they went to the Euros in 2008 and ended up needing medical attention. We went to Austria, Switzerland. It was 2008. Scotland only there, but go out do some programmes, da-da-da. So we thought, that sounds great. Now, first up, what I have to say is, it was not great. Uh, the, that old phrase about no Scotland, no party, uh, it is actually correct. See, we went out there as like neutrals, rubbish, right? Absolutely garbage, right? But typical, the way they look after us, no getting to the championships this summer on our 30th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they took us to Austria and Switzerland, right? And they put us up in Germany. <laughs> we, we weren't even in the same country. <laughs> Is the is the, where the championships were taking place ridiculous? Yeah, well, we they had to be fair, taken us to the tournament in France as well, where we did uh, daily shows. This is absolutely an epic off the ball tale because Tam sadly got uh, sun uh, stroke, <laughs> and we had to call in uh, me with my pigeon French called a local doctor who came to our hotel and said, "Oh." Uh, Tom, I'm going to have to give you an injection. So you get the injection. <laughs> that was joyful, right? <laughs> and, and I says to him, greedy as ever, I says, oh, I'll get all the receipts so we can claim them back. <laughs> and I looked down at the receipt 
and the guy had made a quick squiggle for the term visit du doctor. And it just put VD. <laughs> Fan zones are a big part of the experience for the Tartan army, both here and abroad. A chance to watch the game and celebrate, as well as occasionally commiserate together. Here, the teams discuss fan zones and what their ideal one would include, before getting into a classic off-the-ball story and curling. Uh, Jay, fan zones then popping up around the country, does this sort of thing appeal to you? Uh, I don't I don't really get it, to be honest. I don't get the people that are travelling to Germany just to go to the fan zone. Like, I find that really weird. Like, recently, um, the actor Jack Black was um, flown out to China to do some promotion for Kung Fu Panda. Jack Black doesn't he do the voice of Kung Fu Panda in China. <laughs> and... To me, that seems less pointless than going to Germany to stand and look at a TV a wee bit closer to the pitch than the TV in your house. Bits. I mean, surely one of the main advantages of having a TV is that you can watch the thing that you want to see without leaving your house. <laughs> Is that, are these the same sort of people that only phone you when they're standing in your garden? <laughs> I just, I don't get it. For me, talk, talk to the tellies and here's a nice clean story <laughs> that you can use. It's one of your favourites as well when you're talking to the telly because I want everybody to look out for us. When you talk about <clears> memories <throat> that have been cast up in the show about Scotland games, etc. Uh, we went in, um, unlike this summer, we went in to do Off the Ball one Saturday back in 2003. Saturday afternoon. 2003 was one of those years when there was no World Cup, there was no Euros. It's so the height of summer, we and Stuart, what, what, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? And we thought, oh, somebody up there likes us, you know. And we went in and we opened the back pages of the Daily Record and that very day that we were in in 2003 was the 25th anniversary of Archie Gemmell's goal against Holland at the 78 World Cup, right? Our greatest goal ever. And uh, so we thought, that's us sorted for today. And we, we said to the listeners, this is, this is going to be Scotland's JFK moment. If you were old enough to have witnessed it, where were you when Archie Gemmell scored that goal, right? And again, I can see people in the audience nodding their heads. And, um, you know, the, it was great. We had, I remember the guy saying, oh, Tam, I remember I was, uh, I walked my daughter down the aisle that day. And just when we thought the day couldn't get any better, put the telly on at night, Archie, wow. And it was a wee sad one. There was another guy said that they'd, uh, him and his brothers, They'd buried their wee mammy that day. Mm -hmm. And he says, but when they saw the game at night, tears of sorrow turned to tears of joy, right? We get the next, because we were still doing phone calls in that day. Next guy, yeah, we get the next caller on. Where were you when Archie Gemmell scored that amazing goal against Holland 25 years ago the day? And the voice just said, I was 10 yards for the greedy wee bugger, screaming <laughs> for a pass. <laughs> <laughs> And it was Aza Hartford. <laughs> Amy, describe your dream fan zone. What would it look like? What would be in it? Big screens, as you say, so you can actually see the action. Actually decent seats. And then in the middle, just a fountain of English tears. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. <laughs> Athena, sorry about this. <laughs> I apologise. Uh, I'll bring you in, Athena. Go on, describe your dream fan zone then. All right, I have to be honest and say I've been in a fan zone with England fans and the one thing would, that would make it better is if the England fans weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, there's, it's not our fault we're indoctrinated from, like, you know, from when we're born in 1966. <laughs> um, but sort of no football fans, really. I want sort of a fan zone, but with, like, curling fans, you know? <laughs> because those are nice, they sit down. Down. Oh, good at that, I it? know, yeah. right? Imagine, did you guys have did you guys have fan zones for curling? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, just yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, it'd be, yeah. it'd be, it would be it would have been indoors, it's winter, you would have there been like warm hot toddies, maybe, yeah. like gentle cheering. Uh, so sort of like get fans from other sports to watch football, just so we can see how to support a sport sort of nicely. A curling fan zone's a bit like a funeral though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Chess on ice, it's one of the great, <laughs> sto great sports of all time. This is I about mean, the fifth I, time we've had this conversation. Nah, but, you know, I, I'm a big, big curling fan. And were it the case that it was any other nation other than Scotland, 
We wouldn't humiliate it. It's played in America, in Canada, in Russia, in Germany, in Norway, and we are one of the best teams in the world, and here we are sneering at it. Well, let's no sneer. Come Ridiculous. On, <laughs> Sneer away, Ben. Yeah. Sneer, it's the most boring thing yeah. ever. <laughs> Curling is the best excuse yet for global warming. <laughs> Back to football now, and our Euro special featured an appearance from Scotland's only World Cup winner and trailblazing footballer Rose Riley, after which Stuart Cosgrove let us know about the other reason why Rose is Ayrshire royalty. True story this day is she's the queen of Chucky Bray. Do you know where Chucky Bray is? I don't, Stuart, no. It's in Stuart and in Ayrshire, and it's a steep, steep bray where farmers let their chickens run on the road because there's not a lot of traffic. And Rose Riley learned to dribble running up and down Chucky Bray, dribbling in and out of chickens. <laughs> Brilliant. Did not but I tell that. you that that's the sort of colour that you can put in when you're getting rid of all the swearies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll need a lot more of that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Up next, it's the road to Germany. And one fan in particular made a special effort walking 1,000 miles from Scotland to Germany for the Euros. Craig Ferguson from Paisley made the epic journey to pay tribute to the famous Proclaimers song and raise funds for a men's mental health charity. Now, I'd just given this information to our panellists, but unbeknownst to them, someone who knew Craig was sitting in our audience. And I must say... He's a con man. No. <laughs> I, I've seen him on a ferry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a perfect time to say that Craig's mum has joined us here today. <laughs> Craig Ferguson's mum is genuinely in the audience. Is this right? And there she is, waving there. I'm just, actually, stuff. Just I'm, wanted, I'm, I'm actually quite moved here, Des. You know, <laughs> a, a, a mother for Paisley who knows the whereabouts of her son. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he, genuine question, has he got a ticket to the games yet? No. Yeah, because I read the article and I was like, that guy just wants a ticket, like, so badly. <laughs> yeah, you should well, get one. I'm not giving him mine, but... I mean, if he doesn't end up with a ticket, he has to, he'll be kicking off at the door. Yeah. Let's be honest, there'll be some big bouncer. You've not walked a thousand miles and the skin's falling off your feet to get to the door and go, oh, no worries. It'd be... Some other time, yeah, yeah I'd be but, kicking off. Amy, it'd be funny though, wouldn't it? <laughs> You'll be pleased to hear since our recording Craig did get a ticket for the opening game against Germany Let's just hope it wasn't a standing ticket Inspired by Craig's feet on his feet I asked the panellists what they would walk 500 miles for And 500 more What would you personally walk 1,000 miles to see? Amy Trump's face getting the jail <laughs> <laughs> Athena, what would you personally walk 1,000 miles to see? No word of a lie, Andy Murray to win Wimbledon again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want him back, I want him back. You are shameless It'd trying nice to get a Scottish... would be nice British again, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get around the houses here. Tam Cowan, what would you personally walk 1,000 miles to see? Um, I'd quite like to see uh, Jamie Redknapp Wearing a pair of these slip in sketchers. <laughs> there is no way until they dangled two million quid <laughs> in front of his eyes that he'd have been seen dead in a pair of sketchers. That's, that's what I wear. I wear sketchers. And the most, although I quite I secretly enjoyed it, I was in a well known pool stroke snooker hall in Glasgow. A number of weeks ago, this is true. And there was a young guy that was in, and a young guy came in, he was juking about all the tables, having a look at who's in. And he caught me, right? And all he shouted out to the rest of his pals, and it was very busy. I was stood there, take my shot at the pool. He shouted out, he shrieked out, this is gospel, he shrieked out. He says, oh, look, Tom Cowan's wearing my granny's sketcher. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Can he whack that? What about this then? Jay, what would you personally walk 1,000 miles to see? I think times have changed, Des, because like in my youth, it would have been like tickets to go and see my favourite band. You know, it would have been something like that. Now, uh, it's a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you were to do a Craig Ferguson, what would you personally walk 1,000 miles to see? Uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, genuinely, because when I'm in Germany, I'm missing my son's nursery graduation, uh, my wedding anniversary, and my wife's birthday. So I need Taylor Swift tickets, otherwise I'm getting a divorce. So <laughs> come on, come Let's through. Let's make it happen. Believe it or not, Ray Bradshaw did manage to get those tickets to Taylor Swift. He saved his marriage, but lost a kidney. Now, before we leave the topic of travel, here are some unaired extra jokes to help travelling Scots better understand our German hosts. <laughs> Scotland fans have, of course, been warned about the strength of the German beer. Official advice from a Scottish FA spokesperson who tried it with up here, love you, Kenny <laughs> Giesecker. <laughs> Little known fact, the German for bagpipes is doodle sack. <laughs> True. Unfortunately, one fan was asked by a local if they could have a selfie with his doodle sack. <laughs> and he's now spending the rest of the tournament in a police cell. <laughs> now, Scotland manager Steve Clark is the man of the moment, and our panellists delved into what makes him tick and who their dream Scotland manager would be. But first, Ray tells us about the, let's say, respect that his players have for him. Lyndon Dykes. This, I think this sums up. Like Steve Clark is a manager. Um, Lyndon Dykes once told me that he does his big shop in the M&S garage down the road from him because Steve Clark lives near him and he's too scared to go to Tesco where Steve Clark goes. So, <laughs> like, which I think is just sums it up perfectly. He's got, that. He's got yeah. an aura about him. Who would you want to manage the Scotland national team and why? Uh, Craig Levine. <laughs> <laughs> Levine we're going for, right? This is a good list we're getting. A I was list. just about to say the same thing. Yeah. Were what? you? Mr Levine. Aye, uh, You might right lose too. him for the podcast. No, but at least I could then be his assistant and make sure he plays Ben Doak. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone deserves second chances. You're going has, for Levine? Has to be Levine. So we've got a couple of votes I'd, for Craig you Levine. You know, I'd, uh, I hosted a thing where it was um, John Hughes was a manager of one team and Craig Levine was a manager of the other team. And John Hughes was taking it really seriously with tactics on the board and stuff like that. And he was going mental at his team. And Craig Levine walked up to me and went, he's not even noticed I've got 13 players in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Just a different approach. Exactly. <laughs> Stanley Stryker. I don't know if Amy even knows this, but it's fact. I've known it for years that your good pal, Craig Levine, uh, and we were talking about the Second World War, his uh, grandfather was a guy called Field Marshal Frederick Levine. And during that Second World War, he was put in charge of 10 battalions. And uh, unfortunately, he lined them up in a 4 6 0 and they get gummed. <laughs> <laughs> True story, Amy. Leave it yeah. huh? Our manager, Stevie Clark, says he's happiest wearing a tracksuit with a wee whistle around his neck. Here's a guy that grew up in the rave scene in soul coats. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're all behind you, Mr. Clark. Over to music now, and Scotland has punched well above its weight when it comes to football songs over the years, and this competition has been no different. So I asked our panel to pitch their perfect song for the Euros. Uh, just a track of John McGinn laughing, like that's the <laughs> base one, and then the only words are just England commentators uh, describing their missed penalties. So like, <laughs> just, and David, oh, David Batty. And it just constantly goes like that the whole time, that's it. That's the same Every now and then he shouts the word meatball. And I'll be <laughs> it. it. Uh, Amy, go on, give us your pitch. The perfect song for Scotland at the Euros. Just a mashup of loads of Steve Clark interviews because they'll all kind of have this same kind of monotonous yeah. Yeah. tone to them, but then get Calvin Harris to remix it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he's going to be on stage at Transmit the same time the Euros final's yeah, taking place. Yeah, yeah. So we can just see it now. Scotland win the Euros and Calvin Harris is on stage playing the hit of yeah. the summer. I can see It'd it. It'd be so good, like... It's just Steve Clark, like, and I think we played a game, and it's, it's coming out, like, I'm sexy, and I know it. <laughs> I'm in it, I'm in it. He's a winner, number one hits. <laughs> Athena, what about you? You've been in Scotland long enough to tell us what a perfect song should be for the Euros. I think it should be something along the lines of, let's get on better with England fans. <laughs> <laughs> something conservatory, you know, something friendly, you know, you've qualified for tournaments now, you've got great World Cup, well, yeah, you've got world-class players, you know? Hmm. So, you know, let's just bury the hatchet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> something nice, yeah. Something mm. like, we're all part of the union. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Cut it, cut it. I don't, I don't well. mean it. I don't, I don't, I don't mean that bit. Yeah. But just, Surprise, yeah. Surprisingly, that sold really well in one half of Glasgow, though. <laughs> so that's all right. Yes. The broadcaster, Stuart Cosgrove, spontaneously combusted. <laughs> <laughs> 
Judith was mine's just... recording. I've never seen a man's arms cross so tightly. Yeah. <laughs> like, that his face has gone like blue. It, it just, just kept going. You know, it was what, I'd like... be very generous here, Athena, because everybody's ganging up in England and stuff. I, I would suggest a new song for England uh, for your campaigns. A cover of the old Johnny Logan classic, What's Another Year? <laughs> <laughs> Is that his friend? I do think that we have a dream. Mm. And that, because that's what it's all about. And we, we are dreaming, could we get beyond <laughs> uh, the group stages? Could we get into the knockout section, you know? And that was, you know, I love the lyrics of Andy Cameron's uh, Ali Start and Army, but in terms of we have a dream, 1982, it can still give you the goosebumps to this day. And I'd love just to see that again with the squad there. The guys that did it, they were all rat arse, you know, when they were, <laughs> they weren't, they all admit it, they were all basically, you know, that fortunately they were able to mime and all the rest of it. And um, and you'd have it in there, you'd the late great Christian, B.A. Robertson, uh, wee Willie Carson uh, was in there as well. It was incredible. And any time they play that at Hamden, and it's a firm favourite with the fans now, it really gets you up. That's so the one. Let's re record that in the same way they re recorded uh, the band aid. Yeah. yeah. So, no, but different generations. Yeah. Jay, could you quickly pitch us your perfect song for Scotland at the Euros? Uh, yeah, I've taken my inspiration from Steve Clark um, for this one, and I think we should have a Shania Twain classic that don't impress me much. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. it's ideal because you can doctor the lyrics for every game. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, replace the lyric Brad Pitt with, okay, so you're Thomas Miller? That don't impress me much. <laughs> and then we can do that the whole time. We will be singing out in the terraces. That's just about it for me and the best of unbroadcast breaking the Euros. But don't forget, you can catch up with the main show on BBC Sounds and iPlayer right now. I leave you with this from Tam Cowan on what he would say to inspire the Scotland squad. Tam, if you go out and send a message there, if you were the manager, what would you be telling the boys? Right, see, if I was the manager, I wouldn't even give them a team talk because I think the minute that any player pulls on that Scotland jersey, that's all the motivation they should need to go out and do the bizzle for their country, right? If you go way back um, to the 1982 <laughs> World Cup, and uh, this is, is true, is Scotland uh, were lined up there to go against Brazil. You know, and Brazil had let Zico, Socrates, all these giants, you know, and all these wee kind of ginger, pale-faced <laughs> Scotland players were lined up, ready to go to the tunnel. Uh, the true story goes that the referee said to both teams as they were about to go, OK, boys, enjoy the match. May the best team win. <laughs> And just at the back, Graham Souness was heard saying, I hope no. <laughs> <laughs> the Euros are broken. I've been Des Clark. Come on, Scotland. Come on, Scotland.